Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to discuss about state model of field controlled DC motor. Right. So the DC motors are classified into two types. One is armature controlled and another one is field controlled. Right. So here the speed of this DC motor is directly proportional to the armature voltage and inversely proportional to the flux. Right. This is a general relationship. And here the armature voltage is always kept constant. Then how, an, how can we vary the speed? We can vary speed only by changing the flux. Right. So here, therefore the speed is varied by varying the flux. And in other words, the flux is directly proportional to the field current. Right. Therefore, whenever we need to change the speed of the DC motor, we can change the speed by varying the field current. Right. Because the field current in turn is related to flux and flux in turn is related to speed of the DC motor. Right. Then, the speed control system as we all know it is an electromechanical system right so electrical part what are all the things which comes under electrical system you see electrical system consists of armature and field circuit right and here but for analysis we are considering only the field circuit because as we already said the armature voltage is always kept constant right therefore here the field circuit is considered and the next thing is mechanical system here the mechanical system consists of the rotating part of the motor that is rotating part is nothing but the shaft and again the load which is connected to the shaft okay they together form the mechanical system this is the diagram of the field control dc motor right so this part forms the vf that is field part and this forms the armature part and this contributes the load right so here i hope you people are familiar with all these terms vf is nothing but it is the field voltage here field current field resistance field inductance and here this is va is armature voltage armature current and here again j and b these are the things which contribute to the load and here theta is the rotational displacement and here in here in this armature that is LA and RA are considered that's it right so here just now we have discussed about these basic terms right what is meant by R of LF IF and VF so apart from that we need to be familiar with some other terms you see theta is nothing but angular displacement right and omega is nothing but d theta by dt so it is known as angular velocity and t is nothing but the torque developed by the motor and here ktf is nothing but a torque constant right and j is the moment of inertia of the rotor and load and b is nothing but the frictional coefficient right and now we are going to analyze these parts individually so first we are moving with the field part right so this is your field circuit now we are going to apply Kitchas voltage law so Kitchas voltage law in a simple way we can say that sum of voltage drop in a circuit is equal to sum of voltage rise in a circuit right so here the voltage drop is contributed by this resistance and inductance so voltage drop across the resistor is given by RF into IF Voltage drop across the inductance is given by LF into DIF by DT. These are all the voltage drops, right? Here, what is the voltage rise? Here, the voltage rise is VF, which is nothing but our supply voltage or source voltage, right? Now, we are going to our mechanical part here. So, regarding this mechanical part, we are having a J and a B, right? So, when you write expression, j into d square theta by dt square plus b into d theta by dt is equal to t right and here the torque is said to be directly proportional to pi into if right so here in in further simplifying we can write it as even you can just omit this okay no need torque is directly proportional to if right so we can include proportionality constant here. So, which is nothing but KTF into IF. Right. 
because ia is a constant therefore the torque is directly proportional to the field current alone right and here so j into d square theta by dt square plus b into d theta by dt is equal to what is the value of torque here here the torque is nothing but you can just write this value that is it is nothing but ktf into if right so mark it as equation number 2 here so the equations 1 and 2 are the differential equations governing the field control dc motor right now we have to select the state variables so here you see the field current the omega and theta are the state variables right so we are equating it to the particular terms of x here so x1 is equal to if and x2 is equal to omega which is nothing but d theta by dt and finally x3 is equal to theta right so the input is nothing but our field voltage vf and vf is always equal to u here right and now we are rewriting the equations 1 and 2 so these are only two equations right 1 and 2 now we are going to rewrite equation 1 so here you see this if is replaced with x1 right and here dif by dt can be written as x1 dot yes so that is the reason here it is written as x1 dot which is equal to vf vf is nothing but it is equal to u here so just substitute u right so rearrange this expression and frame an expression in terms of x1 dot right i am moving this r of x1 to the right hand side and the next step is i am shifting this lf to the right hand side right so that's it mark it as equation number a again this is our equation number two again replace it with the values here right so when you rewrite you see j into d square theta by dt square right d theta by dt is x2 so d square theta by dt square will be x2 dot right so j into x2 dot plus b into d theta by dt can be written as x2 right which is equal to ktf into if here if is equal to x1 so just rewrite the terms here we will be having an expression like this right again frame an expression in terms of x2 dot and mark this as equation number b next consider this expression x3 equal to theta now when you differentiate so d theta by dt it can be written as x3 dot but this d theta sorry d theta by dt is nothing but which is x2 right so mark it as equation number c so finally we had framed expressions for x1 dot x2 dot and x3 dot as well right now we are going to write it in the matrix form so matrix form as we all know here this x1 dot x2 dot and x3 dot the state variables occupy the left hand side here we have to fill up the fill up this matrix with the coefficient respectively so here the coefficient of x1 is minus r of by l up so it is written here no x2 x3 terms so here it is zero right when you consider the second expression again i am having coefficients for x1 and x2 so you see write it accordingly and x3 it is 0 and again when you consider this x3 dot i am having only x2 and coefficient of x2 is 1 so here write it as 1 so 0 1 0 right plus here i am having an input value right you see u u is nothing but input and the coefficient of this u is 1 by lf right so here write accordingly 1 by lf right and the remaining in, the, in those two expressions there is no u terms so we can write it as 0 0 which is multiplied by this u matrix right so finally we had formed one part now we are proceeding to the output part so here the output is as we all know right the output is our theta that is what to say 
rotational displacement is the respective output of a motor right so theta and when you differentiate theta we will be getting omega right so these two are the terms which are considered as output so output quantities are usually represented as y1 and y2 right here we are taking y1 as omega and y2 as theta but already we have certain state variables which are aligned with omega and theta so here this omega is nothing but x2 and theta is nothing but our x3 when you write it in the matrix form you see here y1 y2 because these are all the outputs which is equal to that is here i am having only x2 no x1 no x3 so in the place of x1 and x3 mark it as 0 and the coefficient of x2 is 1 similarly for y2 is equal to x3 so coefficient of x3 is 1 right so 0 0 1 here which is multiplied by x1 x2 and x3 right so mark this as our equation d so equation c right not equation that is the matrix form okay the matrix form c and the matrix form d right they together form the state model of the system right now we are going to draw the block diagram for the obtained expressions so for block diagram representation again we need these three expressions right so the first thing as usual you see we are starting with x1 dot because here x1 dot consists of two terms and the two terms are added right added or subtracted whatever may be so if simply we have x3 dot equal to x2 that is for example if we have x1 dot equal to x2 we cannot proceed right we should always consider consider a state variable which has some terms added together okay added or subtracted whatever may be so here regarding x1 dot i am having two terms which are combined together right so the first step is just draw a summer to this summer one input is this part and another input is sorry one input is this part, this part and another input is this part right so here first i am taking this one because this is the input right so you see here u the coefficient of u is 1 by lf so u gets multiplied with 1 by lf here right so this is given as one input to the summer and you see this term is with the positive sign to so to the summer it is connected with the positive sign right and the next thing is minus r of by lf right so represent it in a box r of by lf and the input is it, it gets multiplied by x1 so here you just write x1 okay no need to draw everything just write x1 that's it so when these two again this is with the negative sign here so to the summer you see here there is a negative sign so when these two terms get added they contribute x1 dot right so when you have x1 dot just draw an integrator right when x1 dot gets integrated the output is x1 right and this output is given as input to this box here right don't overthink just move gradually that's it so the next thing is now move to our second expression x2 dot right to this x2 dot again you see we are having x1 as input okay and we have to insert this term in the block right that is x1 gets multiplied by this term so here i am having x1 already so just draw a block and write ktf by j right so the output will be x1 into ktf by j and that is with the plus sign so here to the summer we are having a plus right and the next thing is b by j x2 right so just draw a b by j block let the input here be x2 okay don't uh, overthink where how this x2 will come how we are going to make this s2 okay don't think like that just draw x2 so again this is given to the summer and this b by j is with a minus sign to so to this summer here we are having a minus sign right so when you combine these two elements the output is x2 dot right so the output of the summer is x2 dot so again whenever you find terms with dot you just 
put an integrator so when you integrate here the output is x2 right and this x2 is equal to what x3 dot again so this x2 is equal to x3 dot again when you integrate x3 dot you will be having your x3 right now we have completed almost about 80 percentage of the block diagram right now here the thing is we have to mark the respective outputs. You see here we had simply marked x2 right. But here we are having an x2 here. So just draw a line and connect it. Right. That's it. So the final thing is we have to go for the output expressions. That's it. So here what is the value of output? Consider these two part. Okay. Y1 is equal to x2 and y2 is equal to x3 right these are all the two outputs so here we know that y1 is equal to x2 right so here i am having x2 right the same x2 is given taken out here and this is nothing but our y1 right and the next thing is y2 is equal to x3 you see here i am having x3 so this is nothing but y2 right so here y2 is equal to x3 so finally we had drawn our block diagram right so this is our block diagram i hope you people are clear with this right if you have any doubt let me know in the comment section thank you